Hey everybody, welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark, thanks very much for watching, and let's get started. In this video, I'm updating my config guide for the Tobii Tracker 5 for use in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I originally released this video, which was a review, as well as showing you the correct install process. I then followed this up with my configuration guide, and that was about four or five months ago. If you haven't watched that video, I strongly recommend that you do as I go through each one of the settings and explain exactly what they do as well as demonstrate it. So don't forget to check that video out before you watch this video as it's going to make a whole lot more sense if you're not up to speed. But anyway, let's get on and see what changes I've made. Let's quickly make a check you're on the latest version of Toby Experience. On the top right, click on the question mark. This brings up the help menu, and down at the bottom there you can see the version. Remember, Toby Experience is updated through the Microsoft Store. How to do this covered in my previous videos. We're done here, we can close the help menu, and now let's select the cog icon. Just a reminder to you, this is where you can ensure you calibrate your eye tracking and align the Toby eye tracker correctly on your monitor for head tracking. I recommend you do this periodically, about once every four to five weeks, just to keep everything aligned. Let's now jump into Sim, select an aircraft of your preference on the runway, any runway will do, and then let's head to the Control Options menu. Step 1, from the top peripheral menu bar, make sure the Toby is selected. This was my previous configuration, let's head over to Sensitivities. And here you'll note all the settings are as per my original config video. After some considerable use, I've come up with two new profiles. One I've called Simhanger GA. This is for small aircraft, Cessna 172, Kitfox and so on. And the second Simhanger Airliner for the larger aircraft, PMDG, Phoenix, DC-6, DC-3 and so on. Starting from my old profile, let's see what changes I've made. Let's head back to Sensitivities. Before we jump into any of the changes, let me just highlight that the settings I'm showing here are my preference. They may not suit everybody. These new settings are purely a guide, a good starting point for you to test, and then make your own adjustments to suit your own personal preferences thereafter. The reason I've created two different profiles is I found I had two different requirements. In the smaller GA aircraft, I found the need for eye tracking to be very limited and sometimes distracting. So I turned off eye tracking, but increased the sensitivity of the roll in yaw. A small head movement was more than adequate to look at a gauge or dial. Conversely, when flying a larger aircraft, those with many more dials and gauges, I found the need for eye tracking very useful indeed, allowing me to flick my eyes quickly to a particular gauge, and so on. Let's start with airliner. I left the eye versus head tracking ratio the same at 0.85. I made a small change to the eye tracking responsiveness. From 0.45, I've turned it down to 0.4. This doesn't create a massive change, but the eye movement from gauge to gauge seemed more controllable. And the only other change I made was to the center stabilization setting, turning that down to 0.30. All the other settings I left exactly as they were. Because the cockpits are so much larger, I found the use of eye tracking invaluable and allowed me to be more responsive. Let's now move on to GA, the smaller cockpit. And here, because the Toby eye tracker is so responsive, I found tiny or small head movements more than adequate to see all the gauges. So effectively, I want to turn eye tracking off. To do this, I move the eye versus head tracking ratio to 1, eye tracking disabled. As I'm not using eye tracking, I can then move eye tracking responsiveness down to 0. And I compensate with this by increasing the head tracking sensitivity on the pitch and raw axis by just a small margin. And I move it from 1 to 1.1. And as I did on the airliner config, the center stabilization is also at 0.30. All the other settings remain exactly as is. No further changes. I can select Done. Don't forget to apply and save any changes that you've made. And when prompted to do so, give the profile a name that's easy for you to identify it. We're done here. 
We can now jump into the aircraft and give it a test. Today I'm at Finland Aerodrome. Small airport, grass runways, based in the Fens, Lincolnshire, in the UK. If you fly in this part of the world, it's a recommended add-on from Burning Blue Designs, at a bargain price. And I've also selected one of my favourite aircraft, the Kodiak 100 from SimWorks Studios. I've changed my profile to SimHanger GA, as is appropriate for this aircraft. Let's jump in the cockpit and give it a test. I've now enabled Toby Eye Tracker 5 and just having a look around. We're on the runway, all primed for takeoff. Flaps are set and it's fairly breezy today with some crosswind. Loads of static aircraft with the scenery which is lovely. I can turn my head, let's just check the flaps. Yes, they're down, I'm happy with that. Just testing that I can lean in and pull back if I want to, which is fine. We're not really heavily loaded today. I've got one passenger on board and a little bit of cargo, nothing more. And with the responsiveness turned up to 1.1, I find by turning my head about 75-80 degrees, I can look behind me if I need to. And the movement seems fairly natural. He doesn't look too happy. Maybe he's heard sim hangers piloting the aircraft. I've got a good ratio of movement, can look up. Okay, I think we're about ready to go. Let's get this bird in the air. I'm not going to yak all the way through this. This is a demo of about a minute, minute and a half of me just doing a normal flight and moving my head around as I would normally to demonstrate the Toby Eye Tracker 5. And you can form your own opinions. Are you using the Toby Eye Tracker 5? Well, you should be. In my personal opinion, it's the best head tracker available for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And it's the closest to a VR experience you can get in 2D without strapping a mask to your face. And before I'm asked, head tracking works with any size monitor. Eye tracking, in my experience, works well up to about 32-inch monitors or TVs. I trust you've found this video useful and informative. Thanks as always everybody for joining me. See you soon. Catch you on the next one. Stay well and bye for now.